see. How's it going? Thank you. There's people. People will come out. No. It's good. Show and tell. So, Mary Taylor, how did your open house go? Well, we've had a good flow through. We've probably had 50 to 60 people wandering through in the last few hours. Uh, I think there's been a, a lot of appreciation of the efforts to beautify that section of the downtown with uh, mm -hmm. the variety of things that you see on the board there with planters, mm -hmm. with uh, better seating, with some lights, which is an interesting idea, having sparkle lights in the trees. Okay. And also having hidden lights under some of the benches, we're going to try and create some kind of ambiance. That's good. You know, on not direct light. All the way from third to second, and you know that Third Street had no um, had no um, standards, no light standards. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think people along that street are going to see a real feeling of uh, of being part of the whole downtown. Good. So. Was it uh, business people or non-business people? Yeah, I think probably most of the business uh, people from the downtown have wandered through today. Okay. And we've had a lot of other people that have come to uh, check out how their tax paying or money is being spent. Okay. So did they chew you out for anything such as my oh, shirt? <laughs> no, not at all. No, I think there's been some real interest in uh, getting to know the the new uh, branding process and the uh, slogan and mm -hmm. the and the brand itself. Drat. Here I thought I'd have grist to my own. No, I, I like the logo. I think it, it speaks to me of a 1930s gas station look, okay. right? It incorporates some of our our rough uh, past in terms of mining and smelting and everything along with the nostalgia that we have here in Grand Forks. And I uh, I think the, the fact that it's black and white is quite a a stark approach, but also sets it aside from those other hundred communities that have pictures of mountains and trees and water and sunshine and stuff. Uh, let's be distinctive, and I think this has a good chance of doing that. So we'll stand out in the crowd. Yeah. Okay. And you know what? Color, make color around it, right? I mean, there are ways that we can make it stand out. It's uh, or like wearing it on something other than a black and white shirt. <laughs> okay. Or like Councillor Krog was saying. That's some red, white, and blue, and it will be <coughs> American Air Force. Yeah, I, I don't know where he got that from. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're happy with the process and what happened today? Yeah, I think that the uh, the mistake that we made was that we should have spoken to the Gazette beforehand and encouraged them to who play it out there, to send it out to the community, but not ask for a vote on it in a... Uh, a, a poll when you're talking the about the logo and the right, branding, okay, right? Yeah. I think that that's a process that has involved uh, at least 300 people in terms mm -hmm. of putting this together, and so yeah, there will be a few people who uh, uh, see it differently, have a different vision. But I think giving too much of a um, a stage to that sort of opposition at this level is not really supporting the effort that the 300 put in before in, in working this through and hammering it out. Right. Well, uh, communications department. I know that uh, the gentleman from Story Co. was mentioning that that would be a, probably a good thing for the city to consider doing is a bit more of a communications department to I, I help think sell the ideas. You know, Doug Allen is really good at saying, let's make sure that we control the message. Mm -hmm. And I think that this got away from us a little bit here in terms of releasing this information that we didn't we didn't control the message as much as we could have. Yeah, it just popped up in the meeting and then nobody knows about it. Well, and that's not the way it popped up with the council. Like, we've reviewed it as it was developed. We've had sneak previews. And, and so, in fact, and we've been on board with it for quite a while. Okay. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add to this, uh, about this process here in the open? Anything else besides the now kind of controversial a little bit uh, branding process and logo? No, I, I think that it's refreshing to see us uh, thinking ahead in terms of what we're doing with the downtown area before uh, what we predict will be development in the West End. I think that a lot of communities wait until uh, their perimeter development begins to put pressure on that they look at what they can do with their downtown and I hope that we've been fast enough on this one that we're actually going to begin to work with our downtown uh, core group 
before that outskirts of the town begin to develop. And they have a, I know that they're trying to get a BI, the BIA actually working here downtown, the businesses, to get things happening and start doing things on their own, not wait for the city, etc. Do you, have you had any input from them or any interface with not, them? Not formally yet, but I'm glad to hear that they're getting a sense of identity and can begin to ask collectively for things that will benefit them. Good. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're welcome. There you go. The open house. Did you come? I didn't video it, so you had to have come. Otherwise, you missed out. I'm going to go have some of whatever's left on. Well, there you go. The open house. We got some survey forms here. Going to fill out and drop them off later. I was too busy, unfortunately, to build them out there. But did you come down? Did you see what their plans are? Did you put your dots on the wall to tell them what was important, what was not so important? Because if you didn't, especially if you have a business downtown, um, why didn't you? Thanks to the mayor and city council and all the city managers that came out and put in the duty on uh, finding out what it is that's important to the people here in town. I'm Marie Sandel and GFTV. I'm Les.